Thank you. Lindsay's been working full time for Disney since 2005. Her background is in theater. She graduated from the School of Drama at Carnegie Mellon University. Lindsay began working with Disney at the El Capitan Theater, then became an entertainment technician at Disneyland, working mostly on Fantasmic. Before joining Disney Imagineering, some of Lindsay's lighting design work for Imagineering includes Catbox Ghost, Haunted Mansion at Disneyland, Harambe Marketplace, and Chiffin's Restaurant at Animal Kingdom, Lauren's Fantastic Flight at Tokyo Disney Sea, Happy Ride with Baymax at Tokyo Disneyland, and for Fantasy Springs, she was the show lighting designer for Frozen and The Springs. She is currently the principal show lighting designer for Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney State. And joining us from theme lighting is Taylor Mauer. Hi. Hi, Taylor. Hi. Taylor is a senior theme lighting designer and has worked with the Walt Disney Company for 11 years. At Walt Disney Imagineering for six of them. Her degree and background are in lighting for live entertainment and general fabrication. Taylor began her Disney journey at age 18, working in attractions in Tomorrowland at Disneyland, and spent many years working as an entertainment technician on Mad Tea Party, Frozen Live at the Hyperion, and Fantasmic, before joining Walt Disney Imagineering to help design Fantasy Springs, specifically the Frozen Kingdom and the Neverland area, like Peter Pan's flight and Super Bowl's with Bunny. Post Fantasy Springs, she now leads procurement and production process for theme lighting in multiple portfolios among a team of very talented designers and production experts well known. Thanks for having us. We appreciate it. Okay, so ladies, first of all, please help. What is the difference between show and theme lighting? Sure. <laughs> so as a show lighting designer, we come up with the overall vision for what we want the lighting to look like for any given space or project. So we decide what type of lights we need, how many, exactly where they go. Um, a lot of the lights that we use are intended to be um, hidden from view, so you'll probably never see them. Uh, but sometimes we decide we need something decorative and functional, and that's when we turn to our friends at theme lighting. And what theme lighting designers do is we analyze the storytelling, the actual scale of the facility, what it's supposed to look like, what the texture and color are, and then we design and build custom lighting fixtures that complement and immerse you in the story. So we are looking at some really beautiful examples of the springs right now. Can you kind of take us into a deeper dive on what it was like to build Fantasy Springs at Tokyo Disney Sea? Absolutely. We have actually different types of stages in our design process. So we start with concepts, and uh, that's really more a show lighting. Yeah. <laughs> We're the ones early on, like I said, deciding exactly how we want each space to feel. Um, I really feel like lighting is what brings the emotional feeling to our guests, and so um, that's really important to me. So in concept, theme lighting designers sit in these meetings and we talk about the feeling, the overall intent, the space, um, and so we kind of come up with this immersive entertainment environment. We decide that we want to put you in the experience as opposed to a version of it. We then take it into detailed design where we talk about size and scale, color, texture, what's the emotion, what's the feeling, and if this means, we actually like refine the shape and the size of the fixture. Arendelle is probably some of our favorite, maybe we're a little biased, uh, but we really love these daytime and nighttime shots to show you exactly how the emotion of the film comes to life the minute the sun goes down. I mean, we're lighting the center, so we're a little biased, kind of like with our stuff. We've been looking at some like very different spaces. We've been looking at kind of small, like intimate restaurants, and then you just showed us this whole massive land. What is what's going on there with all these different scales? So we have to approach light for a very different, different kind of space very differently. Um, we have to take into consideration things, as Taylor mentioned, scale. Um, what is the space used for? What are you in the space to do? Um, are you inside? Are you outside? Um, how far away can I put the light fixture? Is it really close to what I'm trying to light? Is it really far away? Is there weather? Is there not weather? <laughs> is weather. that fixture going to be under the water? Is it going to get wet in the rain? Which you had a lot on this shot. Oh, we do. Actually, Fantasy Springs is the <laughs> single largest land expansion 
for any resort portfolio. Um, it's 35 acres worth of lighting fixtures. Um, how many do you have? It's an astronomical mind-blowing number. Well, there are over 8,000 show lights in the fantasy screens. We have 3,000 fully custom decorative theme lights. So a pretty massive undertaking for a land of this size and scale. Um, but what we do so gratefully, really, is bring to life the different spaces despite the fact that they're so different. Um, and that's kind of where our custom lighting work comes in. Um, again, we might be a little biased. This is like our crown jewel. Uh, a great example of both theme lighting and show lighting in a single space. We can have decorative lighting fixtures, chandeliers, and hidden show lights. Yes, because ultimately, some of our architecture needs the show lighting to help access the themes, the ceilings, the lovely paintings, and the uh, energy spaces. It's really stunning. Uh, scale is something that I think we talk about the most. Um, being that each environment is so different, but we also want them to still feel connected, particularly in Arendelle. Yeah, so this is interesting because the top picture is actually the queue of the Frozen attraction, and then the bottom picture is actually the restaurant in the Frozen Kingdom. So they're actually trying to be a similar space, but because the scale is different, Taylor's picture is that different. Yeah, so it's actually the same wall songs in both areas, but they're completely different, unique scale, and the reason for that is because we want to create that systemic environment, but each one requires its own technical execution that makes it different depending on the queue or the restaurant. So we want you to be able to see your food when you eat it. It's like really important to us. Um, scale also wildly important for something like Tinkerbell's busy levies. Um, it's part of the storytelling, and it's actually the first queue you get when you walk through that Rockford archway. We are immediately shut down to the size of the ferry, and these lampposts continue to reinforce that storytelling because all of a sudden we're humongous flowers. And so that's part of the scale and the magic of being like a show life as I'm connected. Um, and again, just an example of sort of how we might approach like rock work and waterfalls uh, versus more of a themed facade, um, the village that we have. And you can see both examples of Lighting and show lighting. My favorite part of the project process is install slash construction and then test and adjust because it's really the moment for everything you can, you know, drawing and modeling in three dimensions on a computer becomes reality, jumps off the page. Um, and I think test and adjust for you is, I think, most exciting for, for our process. Yeah, we feel like our design isn't done on paper. We do a lot more work in the field, um, live, uh, than a lot of other <laughs> disciplines. So usually at the same time, we're like building yeah. a building and you're out here programming lighting fixtures at the same time. Yeah, it's like quite bad. Usually with other disciplines, the activation in the spring so we can use it, really something special. Yeah, I love that a lot, actually. It's probably my favorite part of the springs. Yeah. And you know, that's the best part of working is it's all concurrent, it's all live construction, and it really comes to life in a really magical way. Yeah, I think these pictures kind of illustrate pretty well how lighting can sort of bring the emotion of a story to life. I think that you, I'm hoping that you get the emotion uh, of each area differently as you see the lighting. We had to approach the lighting differently for each area, so hopefully you feel that. And what would be a story? Nominal presentation from your lighting partners without some horribly embarrassing photos of us. Amazing. We have to. We have to. <laughs> I have had the great pleasure of working with both of you, and you were both incredible collaborators at the top of your field. What kind of advice could you share with everybody who are kind of looking to work in a creative space the way that you guys are? So I started volunteering for theater in high school, and I learned by the time I was about 16 that I really wanted to do lighting design. And what I did is I really just did lighting design as much as I could. I volunteered, I spent as much time as I could learning everything I could about lighting design. And really, um, being a subject matter expert is what ended up helping me get to the job that I have done. That's what we do at Imagineering, subject matter experts. Uh, my favorite, and I would emphasize this for anyone who wants to become an Imagineer, is collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. Um, we can't do it alone. We've been seeing all these phenomenal presentations from our partners and team members all day. Um, that's the magic of what we do is we're a team. So the more communication, the more collaboration we can have, the better, um, you know, 
I'm sure just outside this frame is like 30 other people laughing with us in this space. Uh, but it's part of what brings all these beautiful spaces to life for you. I hope you love Dance of Springs. It's so beautiful. Yeah. So please um, give a round of applause to